Hello everyone, my name is Nikhil. Welcome to my channel Salesforce Musketeer. In today's video, we are going to collaborate with Apex Hour to give session on delegated authentication. So let's get started. Before we go further to understand what is a delegated authentication, it is utmost important to know what is Active Directory. I've written down some points here. Let's go through it one by one. It is a single point of authentication and authorization, a database and set of services that help users get their work done in an on-premise on Microsoft environment. Microsoft on Cloud uses Active Azure Active Directory for the same purpose. It was developed by my Microsoft for window domain network. So when you go to your company and you uh, open a laptop where you have a Microsoft operating system, you see a net, um, network icon where you click on that and you see all the users connected to that network and all the hardwares, for example, the printer or fax machines connected there. You can see all the structure logical mapping of that. And some users have certain permission to, you know, uh, use the services for example i can print out some of my documents only to, through certain set of printers so all that service as well as that permission and that authentication all are taken care by active directory so it is a database that connect user with the network resources they need to get their work done the database or directory contains important information of your organization network such as user connected in network with, an, with assets such as fax, printer, it also saves what permission each user has. So that's what I explained. Some of the users might have more permission, like they can uh, you know, get their printout done from any printers they want, or they can have uh, permission to only one specific printer. It just, and it's just not only restricted to printers, it could be anything. It could be fax machine, it could be some other things. Um, and all that directory contain the list of the users that are connected to that network. So before Active Directory, so when Active Directory wasn't there, then we had to know the IP address in a server and the path of the file which we wanted to access. So for example, any specific user put a file in a shared location. Now to know, to access that file, you have to have the IP address and the path. But it all had become easy with Active Directory now you all you need to do is click on that active directory see the list of the users and you know which users has uploaded that file go to that uh, path and then just access the file so active directory is primarily used to store give permission manage information about users and their resource in a logical structure now let's see the uh, graphical uh, or ui of how active directory looks like so as you see in my slide that this is the example of Active Directory where you can see the uh, user folder where you can click on right click on it and you can add a new user or you can also see the users on the right pane on the right side here and you can all see all the printers or connected to that network and uh, you can see the shared folders. So all these things, uh, it, all this whole thing is known as Active Directory. Now what is LDAP? So light, it, it, it stands for lightweight directory access protocol that makes it possible for application to query user information rapidly. LDAP is a tool for extracting and editing data stored in Active Directory and other compatible directory service provider. Each user account in an Active Directory has several attributes such as user full name and email address. Extracting this information in a usable format requires LDAP. So LDAP is a protocol. It doesn't specify how directory program work. Instead, it is a form of a language that allow user to find the information they need it very quickly. So basically it helps you to extract any information from active directory. It's a kind of a language form of a language or a query, which you just pass the parameters and you get the information from the active directory. So LDAP has two main goals to stay, store data in LDAP directory and authenticate user to access the directory. It provides a central location for accessing and managing directory services running on the transmission control protocol. Now, what is delegated authentication? It was very important to learn uh, Active Directory and LDAP. Once those uh, points are clear, now it's very easy to understand what is delegated authentication. 
it is a way of authentication where Salesforce delegate the service of authentication to LDAP authentication server. So with it, it also means that the the username and password we provide to a Salesforce. Right now, this when you provide that username and password to Salesforce, Salesforce act as an authorization server where it validates your credential. But uh, when there's a way where Salesforce can delegate that part of validation to any other LDAP authentication server. Salesforce accepts the credential but pass the information as is based on the user permission to authentication server via LDAP protocol for authentication, for, uh, for authentication purpose. So that means whatever username and password, if we have that uh, delegated authentication enabled in Salesforce, then based on your permission, basically permission uh, on your profile level, it may pass your uh, username and password as is to LDAP for the authentication purpose and it will dispose the password immediately. Single sign-on and delegate authentication enable user to log into separate app with only one credential. However, in delegate authentication, user has to enter credential into each app separately. The external authentication method controls user pass, username, password, and associated policies. We can use permissions on user setup to determine whether user is authenticated via LDAP or Salesforce. So what it means, that the once you have the delegated authentication enabled, the policies associated with password, like it has to be expired in two months or it has to be minimum length of uh, 10 characters, that what we set in the Salesforce, that will not govern your password policy, that will be governed by your LDAP authentication server. Now it also says that some of the permissions, for example, you want only uh, certain profile uh, certain profiles credential to be validated by LDAP and system admin profile to be validated by Salesforce that can be done. So based on the profile level, um, we can have their credential validated via LDAP or Salesforce. Now this thing I copied from the um, document of Salesforce. Now what is a process to authenticate? So when a user tries to log in either online or using the API Salesforce, uh, tries to validate the username and check the user's permission and access setting. So when you log into Salesforce, what it will do, it will check your username and based on username, it will check your profile and in profile it will check oh, whether user has a permission. Um, if a single sign on is enabled, then it will, based on that permission, it will go to uh, LDAP server for authentication. So it says if the sing is single sign-on user permission is enabled, it calls a SOAP-based web service to validate username and password. As I said, Salesforce immediately dispose of the password without storing, logging, or viewing it. Now the web service call passes the username. The web service, SOAP-based web service, it passes the username, password, and source IP to your SSO web service implementation, which Salesforce serves then access uh, the source IP is the uh, address where the login request initiated. Now it will pass all the information like username, password, IP address uh, to uh, on a SOAP based web service to the LDAP authentication server. Your SSO web service implementation validates the password information and returns either true or false. So the response will either be only true or false. If it is authenticated fine, then it's true, otherwise it will be false. When the response is true, the login process continues and the user log into your org. When the false, the user gets an error message that the username and password combination is invalid. Now let's understand this uh, in graphical manner how it happens. So user in a browser uh, logs into, opens a Salesforce, your custom domain Salesforce, and then uh, it logs into a Salesforce by putting username and password then Salesforce will check the user permission and access settings. Based on that, it uh, will post use a post method to call a delegated authentication SSO endpoint. And it's a SOAP-based web service. Now, remember here it will pass the IP address, username, and password. So on authentication, uh, so in this LDAP service authentication server, it will validate your credential and based on, um, if it is a, if it is validated fine, then it will be passing true. Otherwise it will pass false. Then based on this value, it will give the access token 
to the user to ac access Salesforce. Now we will see this in demo how this works. So for this demo, I have uh, been using a new org and what I've done is I've created a new uh, user with test as Nick demo and I've created a new profile and this is so uh, the important thing to know here in this profile is that I have enabled its single sign on enabled. So that has to be checked, which tells that in a log at login page, the moment they see that the username is this and with the and the associated profile has this setting then it will send this uh, username and credential to the LDAP authentication server so you might not be able to find this uh, setting unless you have the single sign on here let me go here if you don't see this uh, setting there then you need to go here to single sign on and click on edit and you need to check this disable login with salesforce and then keep this blank as of now you don't need to provide this as of now and then save it and then create a username and then pro provide a prof create a uh, clone any standard profile and enable the single sign setting in the profile and then just associate it with your user so once you have this then we will go here and provide this delegated gateway URL now what is what is the value we have to provide here so I'm going to use a playground, which is Axiom authentication service. Let me go here. I'll use token based authentication. So if you see here, this is the delegated authentication single sign on must be activated for your organization. And we have already enabled this part. Now, after this, you need to provide this over here. Now click on save. So once you have provided this, then it is asked for the username so that it can generate a token for that user. So I'm going to provide this username here. And what is a do uh, instance here? It should be your custom domain name, which is mine is this one like this. So this is my custom domain and I'm going to click on generate token. So if you see this token has been generated, even you, if you can refresh it, this will generate a new token for you. Now what you have to do here is I will use this uh, custom domain and try to log in to try to log in it to this uh, custom domain via uh, browser in incognito mode. Now I need to know what is the use, username here. So uh, let me copy the username and provide a username here. Now I can only use this here. So once I copied this token, I'm going to add this token here. Now Salesforce, what it will do is it will see, okay, for this user, it has a profile associated, which has single sign on enabled. And for single sign on, um, setting, we have it here, uh, this disable login with Salesforce credential, then it will go to this URL and it will try to match the token which we have provided here. Now let's see if we are able to uh, log in or not. Now if you see here, we are able to log in via token. So because that was authenticated by the Axiom single sign on tool. So now the pa um, the password will be shared to Axiom and it can maintain the password policies and Sh Salesforce will no longer be dictating the password policies for this particular user. So thank you for watching my video till the end. Please subscribe to Apex Server and Salesforce Musketeer and keep watching our videos. Thank you.